Mentor has expanded their solution to cover embedded software. What's up with that? Let's talk about that next. All right, so let's talk about Mentor solutions for embedded software. Um, it actually, interestingly, has come out of the Mentor Capital set of solutions. Now, if you're familiar with that at all, Capital is really uh, a suite that really addresses the development of EE systems, electrical electronic systems. Um, so why would that solution come out of there? We're gonna talk about that here in a second. But actually there's a lot of capabilities there. Um, and especially when you look at Siemens overall, you have Polarian uh, as far as an ALM, uh, application lifecycle management solution. Uh, and that can be plugged into Team Center, the PLM solution too. But today we're gonna to talk about virtual verification. It's something we've talked about before, model in the loop and software in the loop, but the capabilities of VSTAR, uh, which is this solution that's part of the capital suite, uh, that's what we're gonna focus on right now. Now, the best way to explain what VSTAR does and the rest of the applicable solutions that fit in the space from Siemens and Mentor is to walk through an example. In this case, we're gonna be talking about uh, a car and we're developing a one of those automatic braking systems, whether it's for a car pedestrian that senses the thing in front of it and applies the brakes. It has software aspects to it, it has a board system, uh, there's a network involved and there's actuated components in terms of the braking system itself. Now there's a bunch of challenges on this front. Um, first and foremost, I mean, the, the, the traditional prime concern is how do you know that the software will actually run as intended uh, on the processor? You know, usually with these types of systems, you have to have a, a custom IC or a programmed F PGA, because um, you got to process data really, really, really fast. Um, but how do you know it's going to run on that? Uh, but not only that, but how do you make sure that it's going to be compatible and interoperable on the entire board system? Uh, another concern beyond that is how do you make sure that it works with all the other the other electronic endpoints within the EE system? Uh, so these are some of the concerns that you need to address along, along the way. So let's let's talk about how a lot of companies are doing that right now. Now the traditional way that you make sure that number one, your software logic is actually working as intended is to use this approach called model in the loop. So basically what you do is you take, you build a model of your software logic. And this isn't code. This isn't binary, it's actually just a model, almost like a flow diagram. And then you build a model of whatever your physical system is. In this case, it's gonna be the brake system. And you connect the two. Usually you connect the two through this functional mock-up interface. This is a, a standard interface between, well, systems models. <clears throat> so the way that Siemens and Mentor supports this process today is by using AIMSIM to model up the physical aspects of the, uh, of the mechanical or actuated system. So AIMSIM is part of SimCenter. It was an acquisition from many, many years ago, but it's really good at 1D analyses. Uh, you can use it as part of prototyping and testing. You can use it, actually you can use it all the way over into kind of IoT and digital twin stuff if you want to do that. Uh, but has some really powerful simulation capabilities. But you can, you can uh, connect your model of your software logic to the physical representation. And that way you can verify and make sure that your software logic is correct to start with. And then you move on to the next phase. At this stage, we need to make sure that the software actually runs on the processor and gives us the same logic. You don't want to verify that. This is where you apply software in the loop. And what this looks like is you actually compile the software into binary uh, and then you run it on a virtualized processor. Now these, these ICs can take a long time to develop. 
Um, and you don't want to be sitting around waiting, you know, six, you know, 12, maybe more months than that, uh, waiting on a prototype chip. Uh, you want to verify it so you can progress in development instead of sitting around and waiting. So this is where the virtualized processor, this is where a software application running on, you know, your local desktop um, will emulate the behavior of that processor so you can verify that the software logic, even though it's now being compiled, still works and it still gives you the behavior that you want. And this is where, this is the first spot where VSTAR comes into play. It can emulate that processor, whether it's an off the shelf one, an FPG, maybe a custom one, you can run the binary uh, on that virtualized processor and test it in the same coupled manner that we did with model in the loop. Okay, so this is a interesting point. There's a lot of companies that talk about um, X in the loop, model in the loop, software in the loop, hardware in the loop, all that stuff. Um, but there's very few companies that can offer this virtualization capability of the processor uh, and connecting it to a plant simulation that represents the mechanical or actuated system, in this case, the braking system. So this is, this is one point of differentiation, especially that they can virtualize the processor and be running the plant model, you know, both within Siemens or Mentor type of solutions. Now, verifying that the software runs on the processor seamlessly and it gets the behavior you want, that's important, but that's not the only thing you really need to do. You gotta also make sure that it runs on the board. Um, there's all sorts of other interactions that the software will have with the board. It is processing signals or messages uh, from all over the rest of the car, um, whether that's from sensors or other electronic endpoints through the network. So you got to be able to do that too. And this actually, this is where you want to be able to run the binary on a virtualized board, uh, not just the processor, the board as well. And this, this is where VSTAR comes into play too. Now this is certainly a space where I've heard anyone else being able to do this, to do it at the board level. Uh, and actually it is, it is pretty important. You know, not only do you, you don't want to have to wait for a prototype chip, but also you don't want to have to wait for the prototype board. Um, that's a delay in the development process a lot of people have been living with. Um, kind of the next step is, it's interesting, you go from model in the loop with the software model to processor in the loop or software in the loop where the binary is running on a virtualized processor. And a lot of people go to hardware in the loop, which is where you have a prototype board. But there is now this intermediate step that we just talked about where you have a virtualized board and you verify that the software runs on that uh, and you don't have to wait. You can, you can address design issues and other integration issues uh, through this effort instead. And that's great. And this is, I, again, I haven't seen anyone else doing, providing this capability, but actually that's not the end game. There's another step here. Now, the issue here is that it's not just about software running on one electronic endpoint and controlling some physical aspect of the solution. This system, this embedded system, doesn't operate independently on its own. You actually see a lot of companies now distribute functions that interact with one another across multiple electronic endpoints. So there's an interaction here that has kind of been missing so far. And again, you don't want to wait until prototyping and testing to figure out if it all works together. That's a latent development. And there's all sorts of issues with that. So the solution here from Mentor and Siemens is you know, having a virtualized board system with the software running on it, coupled with the simulation of whatever physical system uh, that it controls. Uh, and again, you know, this works in the same way that we just walked through a second ago. But here's the key. Again, it, 
these don't run in isolation. You actually want these to be interconnected. Um, and this is where VSTAR actually will virtually verify the communication between these electronic endpoints. So it's not just these coupled simulations talking to one another in their own silos. VSTAR will actually support and simulate and verify virtually how these different electronic endpoints communicate to one another. So this is where you see a real differentiator. It's like kind of stacking on top of one another now. Virtualizing the circuit board was one level, but now there's another level where it's virtually verifying uh, everything about your network and the communication that kind of goes back and forth. So is the timing right? Uh, is everything receiving things at the right time? Uh, what's the bandwidth of the network look like? Uh, is it being overloaded? All sorts of issues like that. So if you, if you kind of step back a little bit, there's now two other phases uh, in the X in the loop kind of structure. You know, we had model in the loop, which was just about the software model logic. Uh, and then we have software in the loop, which was all about binary running on the processor. But now we have that the binary running on the virtualized board and now the whole EE system running in a virtualized fashion with all the electronic endpoints running with their own virtualized aspects uh, and then also simulating how the network is going to perform. So and all that goes before hardware in the loop, which is where you get prototypes of the board. Maybe you build out the network, uh, the harness itself uh, as a first iteration on the prototype. Uh, to make sure that it all works. So this is virtual work that happens now uh, that has been added in and it adds a ton of value because you can identify issues and resolve them long before you spend money on building up a prototype. And you really want that to go through right the first time. So that's it. That's how Mentor and Siemens uh, offer solutions for embedded software now and kind of what is entailed for one aspect of it for virtual verification. That's it. Take care and talk soon.